Welcome back to Chem Doctor. And uh, what I want to do in this video is address uh, some periodic trends, uh, specifically uh, ionization uh, energy. All right. And uh, what you're looking at here is a table of data that shows the ionization energies of um, several uh, period three elements. And when I say period three, what I mean is, is uh, the horizontal row um, extending left to right across the periodic table. And this would be the third one down that starts with sodium and then ends on the right side of the table with argon. All right. And um, we will define ionization energy as uh, the energy required uh, to remove an electron from a gaseous atom. So if we start with, with the sodium, uh, if I was to write... Uh, if I was to write a uh, chemical equation that, that would um, demonstrate the definition of ionization energy, um, then in the case of sodium, the very first electron that we're going to remove, um, by definition, uh, the ionization energy is the energy required to remove uh, an electron from uh, the gaseous form of sodium. So what that would look like using an equation would be this this one where we would generate uh, a positively charged cation and then we would show the electron that we remove this way all right so in each of these cases when you look at the table the numbers that you see here represent the energy required to uh, remove an electron at the top of the table going left to right these are um, subsequent ionizations. So the very first ionization of sodium um, requires uh, 496 kilojoules. So if we, if we were to add that information here, um, we would say that uh, it would require 496 kilojoules of energy uh, to remove literally one mole of these electrons from a neutral sodium atom being the first ionization. So I2 would be the situation where uh, we were going in and uh, removing uh, a second, the second electron from sodium. So to write the equation for that, it would look this way, where we would have Na plus and then an arrow, and we would have Na plus 2 here, and then our second electron would be shown this way. And the energy required for that maneuver is uh, 4,560 kilojoules. Significantly more energy uh, than what was required for the first electron. And I'm going to come back to the reason for this in a minute. But what I want to do first is focus on the first ionizations uh, of these elements, starting with sodium going to argon. So what we're really doing here is we're going to walk across the periodic table going left to right across period uh, three. And you can see uh, when we do that, that the ionization energy is increasing from sodium to argon. All right. Now, you, you may remember in your basic class, if, if the uh, professor or the teacher has gotten to this um, part of the, uh, the course where they're talking about periodic trends, that you've already been told that ionization energy, and I'm going to abbreviate it this way, ionization energy uh, increases okay, left to right across the periodic table, and it decreases um, down any group. So I'm just I'll stick that over here. This is this just reflects the basic trends, uh, what's going on, all right? And you can see it in the data. Starting with sodium, we're at 496 for the, to remove the first electron. And um, when we get to argon, the requirement is 1,521 kilojoules. So let's, let's take a look at the reason this happens. Um, because what I would like for the student um, would be uh, for you to have a way of actually rationalizing this that prevents you from having to just literally memorize trends and really not understand what's going on. All right, and uh, to, to do this, um, you've got to also understand electron configuration. So if you have issues with that, you may want to go back and look at a few of my videos on electron configuration 
and then come back to this. But let's let's go ahead and we'll start with sodium. All right, it has 11 electrons, so it's electron configurations 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Now you can see the valence electron is here. So this is uh, the 3s1 electron here. This is sodium's valence shell. So now if I was to draw a, a vertical line here separating that electron from the rest of the electron configuration, um, we're, going to we're, we're going to go ahead and do some labeling. So these electrons that are sitting between the 11 uh, protons in the nucleus of, of sodium and the outer valence, so this is our valence electron or our valence shell, uh, to be more accurate about it, of sodium, then these electrons in here represent what we call the core electrons. And they're sitting between the 11 protons in the nucleus that have the positive charge and this outer valence electron. We can calculate the amount of charge that is essentially responsible for generating the force of attraction on, on this electron here by making a calculation for what's called Z effective. All right, now um, let me put the equation for that in the upper left hand corner here. So Z effective for any particular electron or set of electrons is going to equal the uh, atomic number. Okay, so atomic number minus the core electrons and the core electrons are going to be whatever group of electrons are sitting between the protons and the, the, the electrons that you're interested in, in knowing about. So the Z effective for sodium's outermost electron is going to be equal to its protonic charge, which is plus 11, the atomic number, minus the inner core electrons, which is 10. So the amount of charge available to operate through Coulomb's law to generate force of attract uh, the force of attraction on this outer electron of sodium is actually plus one all right and so the amount of energy required to remove that electron is here it's 496 kilojoules of energy now notice that the next ionization out the second ionization of sodium is a huge jump in energy it's, it's um, let me, I'm going to run a calculator on this right now. So 4,560 kilojoules uh, divided by 496. It's nine times greater in energy. In other words, this value right here is nine times bigger than the ionization uh, energy to remove the first electron from sodium. So why, why is that happening? Right? Because this is just the second electron. But check it out. To pull that electron, we have to take it from energy level 2, which is the next energy level in, and it represents a core electron relative to, to the valence. So what we're going to do here to rationalize this is I'm going to draw a vertical line here now because we took that electron from energy level 2, which was the core electrons relative to the valence. And we're going to go ahead and calculate now the Z effective uh, for an energy level 2 electron by contrast to the electrons now that are sitting in energy level 1. All right, so we'll recalculate. So Z effective is equal to plus 11. And now our new core relative to the energy level uh, uh, 2 electrons is are the two electrons that are in energy level 1. So this is going to be 11 minus 2 now, which is plus 9. So you can literally see the difference here between pulling the valence electron in sodium relative to the valence, uh, not, excuse me, pulling the valence electron in sodium relative to taking um, the second electron, which was out of the core electrons in energy level 2. Literally a 9 to 1 difference. And actually, there's a pretty good correlation here. As I indicated, if you take the ratio of the ionization energy for the second electron by the first one, it's literally nine times greater. 
all right, because literally there was a ninefold jump in the amount of, of nuclear charge um, that's being utilized for the force of attraction for these electrons towards the nucleus of the atom, all right? And you can see a similar correlation in these other uh, in in these other atoms as we go as we move down, uh, or we move left to right across the period, and as we move down through this um, chart of data or table of data. So let's quickly look at um, magnesium as another example. All right, it has 12 electrons. Its uh, configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Whoops. 2p6 and then 3s2. All right, and again, um, it, you can, uh, if we look at the data, you can see uh, an interesting correlation here. So the first ionization is 738 kilojoules. The second one is about twice the value of the first. Notice that we're dealing here with two electrons now that, that are in the outer valence of this particular atom. I'll draw my uh, vertical line again and we'll label. So this is our valence shell for magnesium and these guys in here represent the core relative to that, all right, relative to our valence. There are two electrons out here. The first ionization, all right, is going to be this one where we go to Mg plus plus one electron and the energy we're expending to pull that electron is about 738. The second ionization would be uh, represented with an equation this way. We're going to go from Mg plus to Mg plus 2, and we're going to pull that second electron. But check the energy out. It's about 1,450, which is approximately twice the value of pulling the first electron. This has to do with the fact that we have generated a a positive cation and, and and now we need we need to pull that second electron but we're pulling that second electron off of an atom now that's carrying a positive charge and and if you think about Coulomb's law for a minute um, charge divided by distance squared we've we've increased the amount of positive charge on on the entity or the species that we're pulling that electron so there's more force operating on on the electron um, uh, on the second electron that we're going to take out of the valence, all right, and that's reflected in the fact that the, that literally the energy, whoops, the energy difference here is uh, about twice as much as the energy that was required for that first electron. But then, what I want to draw your attention to is what happens here, and you can see that as soon as we reach inside the core, that now once again there is a, sub, a, a substantial difference in the amount of energy required to pull magnesium's third electron, which has to take that electron from the core. So if we look at Z effectives again, all right, and what I'll do first is calculate the Z effective on the valence electrons of magnesium. So these, these two electrons out here before we've pulled, before we've taken any. So uh, again, the Z effective will be 12 minus and our core electrons there are 10 so the the effective nuclear charge that is providing the force of attraction on these two electrons in the valence is plus 2 before we've pulled any of the electrons now if we calculate the z effective for the third ionization so i'm talking about this one here where we're going to reach inside our core it's going to be 12 minus all right now Let's take a look here. I'm going to draw a new vertical line because when we start pulling the electrons from this region in here, we're pulling out of what was the core. So I'm going to designate this new set of electrons on the inside, the 1s2 electrons, as my new core for this purpose. All right, and there are two electrons in there, and you can see what happened. All right, our, our um, effective nuclear charge is, has spiked to 10 for any of the electrons that are in energy level 2. So when we go for the third ionization of mag magnesium, we're reaching inside here. And the effective nuclear charge that's, that's offering force of attraction for these electrons is significantly more. It's about 5 to 1. And if we look at, 
let's see the energy difference between um, that core electron. So 7,730 divided by 738. It's about 10 and a half times uh, the value for the first ionization here. All right, and let's see what it is for the second one. So uh, 7,730 uh, divided by 1,450 is about literally about five times. So I, I just want to emphasize this. If we look at the ratio here, it's about 10 to 2, which is equal to about 5 to 1. And if we take our energy difference, 7,730, and we divide it by um, 1,450, um, what we see is this is about a 5 to 1 ratio, uh, approximately about a 5 to 1 ratio. All right, so these, thing, these two things match up pretty good. All right, so uh, in finishing the video, here's what I want to say. If you look at this table of data for any of the atoms that are in this trend, okay, number one, you can use Z effective to explain literally the, the periodic trend of ionization energy, which reduces um, the, the uh, um, need for you to literally memorize the trend without really understanding uh, why it's working. So you can use Z effective to, to literally show how this trend works going from sodium to argon in terms of these first and second and, 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 and well, for any of the ionizations actually. But you can also use the Z effective um, to show why you're getting these really huge bumps. All right, and then the last thing I'm going to say before I close the video is that you can utilize a table of data like this uh, to rationalize which electrons are valence and which electrons are core. Because in every single case, like if we look at sulfur, for example, it has 16 electrons, and if I run its configuration, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4, you can see it's got um, four valence electrons in its outer shell. It's in period six, right underneath oxygen, group number 6a, has a total of six valence electrons. We add the four and the two together, we get six valence. All right, now, if you look at the table of data for sulfur, you can see the first ionization, and then the second, the third, and the, the fourth, and then the fifth and the sixth, and then look what happens when we get to the seventh. It's a huge jump in ionization energy, utterly huge. Draw your vertical line here, and you can see what's happened once we pulled that sixth elect electron. We're having to dip into the core electrons. And there will be, and I'm going to leave this for the viewer to do it, there's going to be a huge jump in Z-effective here. I'll call it Z-effective prime, and out here Z-effective for the valence. All right, so Z-effective for the core is way bigger than Z effective for the valence. So this table of ionization energies actually gives you a, a wealth of data about what's going on um, with the nuclear charge uh, relative to uh, uh, the electrons that are in the shell. All right, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and close the video.